welcome back. So let's do a, I guess, a test on rates of change. So just a few questions, um, as usual with all the tests that I post. Okay, so you can uh, download it in the show notes. Okay, so I'll make a, a link for you to download it if you want it. Um, come back and take a look at the solutions, uh, which I'm gonna go through uh, right now. Okay, let's boogie. So question number one, so that's right here. So consider the following graph. So I did this graph in, uh, in Desmos, okay? So, you know, thank you to Desmos for sure. Um, so now you, we're gonna assume that the x-axis is basically a time, okay, scale. y-axis is a temperature scale in degrees. Okay, so it's not necessarily labeled, but it's, um, it's given to you uh, there. Okay, now let's see what they're gonna ask us. So the first part is, find the average rate of change in the temperature between, I guess, zero and 10, all right? So let's do that. Okay, so if you are given a graph and you wanna find the average uh, rate, so basically um, between a particular uh, points, okay? So it's kind of like drawing a secant. So now it says between zero, so it's gonna be right here, which I guess we're at negative one. And then at 10, so that's gonna be right here. And that is actually five, okay? So we can easily spot those through. So to try to get our uh, average rate of change, well, average rate of change, so in this case, we are going to be basically trying to find our slope, okay? So rise over run, uh, but it will be for the secant, which kind of cuts these things through. Notice it cuts it in not very pleasant ways, okay? But from there to there, this is what we have. All right, okay, so let's take a look. So if I'm gonna kind of put this in, let me maybe swap this, so hopefully it stands out a little more. Um, so the change, so that's gonna be five minus, okay? So the negative one divided by, and that's gonna be between zero and 10. So the, the bottom is uh, 10 minus zero. Okay, so we have, so six over 10, or simply 0 0.6. And that is, I guess, degrees Celsius, okay? Um, over time, uh, sorry, time T. Uh, we need the units, okay, over S, okay? Because this was supposed to be in seconds, I think, yeah. Okay, so seconds and then degrees Celsius, okay? So that's part A, all right? So that's that first uh, secant. Now let's take a look what else they ask. Part B. Find the average rate of change in the temp. Okay, so now it's from minus 10 to 20. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this junk. All right, so let me move this out. <clears throat> okay, I'll clean up this uh, as well. And minus 10 and 20. Okay, well, so that's from this, this it's gonna be from this point, from the top point right here. So that's still at five and 20, okay, so that's all the way down here. So that's gonna be minus one. So we're going, okay, kind of in this direction. So we're gonna to try to find this particular slope. So y over that, okay, so the, the bottom, uh, I guess it's 20 minus negative 10, so it's gonna be 30. And then the top, it's minus one. So it's gonna be negative, and we can see that the slope is negative as well for that rate of change. And that's at five. Okay, it's gonna be minus six all over. And this is actually 30. Okay, um, I mean, I guess we can, you know, and again, this is going to be in degrees, okay, over seconds right there. Okay, so whatever that was, I don't know changing some kind of temperatures for something. Okay, so negative um, six, well, six goes into 35 times, right? So it's gonna be minus that, um, which I guess if it's in decimal, so it's negative 0 0.2, right? So that's what we should, uh, we should get. So that's for the second part. Um, that's the average rate of change. Now find the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 30. Oh, so t equals 30, well, that's here at the peak. Okay, so that's, that's right here, right? That's 30 right there. And well, we know instantaneous 
rates of change okay so I mean you know thinking of the tangent lines okay so here uh, it's actually flat right so this is actually gonna be zero okay and if that is the instantaneous rate of change and if you want you know you can put that in okay so we know so this is kind of like a maximum at that particular point so that will be for part C all right so that's question one okay great Let's take a look at question number two. Um, so a virus has infected 12 people in a major city. The infection rate for the virus is 7% uh, daily. Okay. Um, so they don't give us a lot of information, but I guess, okay, rate of infection. So this is kind of, I guess, the old school um, exponential growth because if it's a virus right and, and then we have an infection rate of seven percent daily so if you recall okay, so now we're gonna it's asking us first to construct a function all right so function so number of people and then state independent and dependent variables okay so i'm gonna put p for the population okay with respect to time t and t is going to be in days so that's the, the independent uh, variable is going to be time. Dependent variable is going to be, you know, number of infected people. So I'll keep that at P there. And so I'm not sure if you remember or not, kind of from grade 11 exponential growth. Um, so, you know, you have, you're going to start with your initial amount. So you have 12 people infected. And then it is one plus the rate um right uh one plus the rate of the exponential growth so in this case it's seven percent so that's going to be one plus zero point zero seven and then uh, this is going to be t so this is a completely exponential function all right so that's what that's going to be and i mentioned the independent independent variables already so you have that okay um, okay, so for part B, how many people would be infected in 100 days? Okay, well, that's not a very hard thing to do. It's nothing to do with rates for us here, but that's all right. So 12 times, so it's going to be 1.07, and I guess this is 100 days. Okay, so we'll have that. Okay, equals. All right, so that's a lot of people. So that's going to be around let's round it so that's how many people would be infected if this continued so it's clearly just kind of skyrocketing and that's what we would expect out of exponential growth right now find the tangent line at t equals uh 10 days oh, okay so this is going to be annoying um all right okay let me copy this okay so copy I'm gonna bring it down, let's put it in here. So we want uh, the instantaneous rate of change basically, so the tangent line, so this is a t is equal to 10. <laughs> okay, well, so what we have to do, um, so if you remember, so this is gonna be p, okay, it's gonna be 10 you know, plus your h minus uh, p at 10, divided by um, your h right so the change and then what we want uh, for the tangent lines for the instantaneous we want this h to tend towards zero so make it as small as possible and we're going to approach it you know both it's going to be positive and negative all right so that's going to be our instantaneous rate of change okay so what i'm going to do and then I'll, I'll guess i'll speed up the calculation but i'm just going to be substituting you know these things in here put it back into this um, and then you know I'll leave H alone just to try to see if I can simplify it um, and then we'll slowly um, see what we're going to get for our instantaneous rate of change okay um, if necessary I'll plug in we'll plug in some numbers you know both very small and the positive for H and very small and the negative and then we can take the average between the two and it's going to give us you know pretty much a dead-on approximation okay um, so see you back soon.
Okay, so I'm gonna pause here just so that you can see what I did. So I mean, I'm just trying to simplify, right? So I separated these two. Um, and then, you know, I took out the factors out. So 12, 1.07 to the 10. So I took that whole thing out right here. And then it just gave me this, all right? Okay, so uh, let me just compute it. All right, so let me stop here. So what I did was, you know, I just took, okay, simplified this. I mean, I substituted my H in. You can make it smaller if you like. So both, I took the positive one. That was my answer. Here's the negative one. So notice, you know, if you would take the average, I mean, basically to, you know, four decimal places. So it's about 1.59, you know, 71, okay, so. You know, it's close enough. I don't think we need more precision there. So that would be the actual tangent line slope. So it would be positive, makes sense because it's blowing up um, at 10, okay? And that, that's, what would, uh, that's what it would be, okay? All right, okay, so let's okay, go back. So that was um, C. Now, uh, part D, what is the average rate of change on the interval, so between zero and five? Okay, so, you know, zero and five, so this one is not gonna be as annoying, I guess. You know, we'll take this, so let me copy. Okay, paste it. And, you know, so what we're doing in this case is, you know, so we're starting off and it kind of goes like this. So I guess, you know, if this is, you know, zero, you know, at, at, uh, at zero, it's at 12, right? So we know that. And this is gonna be, you know, at the time, five days, okay, so whatever. So we have to get that particular item. And then we're just finding basically this, okay, so the secant, okay, so the slope there. Um, so this is just y over um, x, okay, or in our case, you know, the change in the population over the change in time. Um, and the only thing I guess that I don't know is what happens at five. So. 12, 1.07, this is at five days. Okay, so that's gonna be that. Let's put that in. So 12 times 1.07 to the five. Okay, so whatever that might be, I'll keep that answer. Um, so minus the, uh, the 12, right? Because that's where we're starting because that's a t equals zero. Okay, so that's gonna be approximately that much. So that's my delta p. All right, and then um, divided by, well, it's just from zero to five, so we're gonna be dividing by five. All right, so it's, I guess, approximately one, you know, 0 0.9, whatever, six, six, okay? And that is the, uh, the change. Now it's the uh, secant, so notice it does have units because it's the number of people, right, per day, okay? So, um, so I guess infections, you know, that's the rate per day, okay? So that's what we would have approximately, okay? That would be the average on the first five days. Now, of course, this is gonna start blowing up on us, you know, the further and further we go because it is um, gonna get exponential, all right? So that's another question for you, all right? All right, so here's the next question. So question three, so take the equation uh, so it looks like it's a quadratic. It looks like it's going to be pointing downwards. Okay, so we know a little bit about quadratics from um, grade 10 and 11. Okay, uh, plot using a graphing tool. All right, so we're, we'll plot this out. Um, using the plot tools, approximate the tangent lines at 0 and negative 0 0.5. Okay, so, well, tangent lines is going to be basically the instantaneous rate of change, right? So that's what we're going to have to do uh, to do. Now we're gonna be approximating it in some particular way. Um, I guess we'll see how, you know, how we're gonna take a look at that and then describe what happens to the tangent line as you go on the interval between negative three and three. All right, okay, well, let's plot it out first. Okay, so here's Desmos, um, which I love to use for all of these. You can use whatever graphing tools. Sometimes people use graphing calculators. I actually never do. 
um, anymore at all. Uh, in fact, actually, I've never used them. Um, you know, we actually have to sketch these things out. We didn't utilize the uh, the graphing tools, but as technology kind of shifted over, you know, I'm becoming obsolete. But I do use okay some other stuff. Okay, so let's kind of blow this in because we don't we don't really need a range of um, and then the domain as much. So this is our peak, right? So basically, we knew that it's going to be a parabola pointing downwards uh, because of the negative four in front of the x squared. Um, so we have, you know, two zeros there, the two zero crossings. And um, so now we can try. Okay, so first of all, uh, so A is done. Now C, so drawing the tangent lines here. Okay, let me, you know what I'll do is this. Okay, let me copy this. Okay, I'll try to do that because it says between negative three. Ooh, that's going to, ah, that's okay. You know what, I think you're going to get the gist. Let's just kind of fatten this up a bit. All right, so it's going to get from negative three. Okay, so I'm going to capture this. And just so that I can just concentrate on that. Okay, and let's, let's add it to, so we're going to be adding it into here. Okay, so well, negative three, so that means, you know, so what happens on the tangent lines? So our tangent lines in here, you know, as you kind of start pointing these in, so notice that, you know, so our tangent lines, as good as I can, or, or as close as I can make it there. Okay, so that's there. And let me do different colors. Okay, so what do we notice? We're going, so clearly we can see that the tangent lines Okay, so our slope um, on that particular function. So it's basically it's 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 very it's it's getting you know steeper, but then okay, it's getting less steep. It's still positive, right? And then as we go through, you know, we know that here at the peak, you know, we would have been basically just flat lined, and then you know we start. If we attach it here, and then they said you know to three so it's going to be somewhere around there so it goes positive okay it gets less steep yeah, so the rate is decreasing gets flat then becomes negative and then starts to increase again okay so that's between negative three and three so that's what happens to the tangent okay? and that can be described you know in your own words uh, as needed now the the part b is a little annoying because we want to be able to find the tangent lines at i guess x is equal to zero and then x is equal to negative five okay so we can sh certainly do that okay x at zero okay so i'm going to remove these okay so it says you know we're approximating so it doesn't have to be perfect but you know at zero it's right here Okay, so we need, you know, a tangent line. It's going to be like that. That's what we need. And now we can kind of approximate that one. And then the second one that we have, or they're asked is for uh, at x is equal to negative 0 0.5. Well, that's not too far away. So they're both 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be somewhere around here. Sorry somewhere around here okay so we have that so they're very close i mean one is going to be steeper than the other okay for sure so the one at negative 0 0.5 will be steeper than the one which is at zero all right okay so let's try one okay i'm going to remove this Okay, and we can try to approximate it. Now, the tangent line, you know, as you're going through, I mean, the easiest thing to do is to try. All right, so I, I can see like a point here because I can see the grid there, right? You know, so I can take that point and then take this right there. So that will be one point. And then, you know, where else does it nicely kind of cross through or does it? No, I, I guess, you know, right here. Okay, so it's going to be right here and then right there. 
So what are we doing? I mean, since we're approximating this, you know, so we need this, the, the actual slope, right? So rise over run. So we need rise over run. Okay. Um, so equals. So we'll do one of them, and then you can do the other one if you like. Okay, so for this one, um, on the Y, so it's going to be what? This is 20. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's, it's 15 minus, and then the other point is going to be, so 1, 2, 3, 4, it's the same thing. So that's around 5. It's negative 5. All right. So that's going to be that. And... So here, so the other one, so the um, delta x, so that, that's the change. So that's going to be what? 1, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's broken into 5. So it's 4 out of 5. So it's going to be 1, okay, and 4 fifths, okay, because I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, out of 5. So that's 1.8. You know, you can check that for yourself. Minus... And then the second one is one, two, three, so four again. So four out of five. And that's on the negative side. Okay, so it's going to be negative 0 0.8. Okay, so that's going to be our slope. So we have 20 all over. So plus this is going to be 2 point, I guess, um, 6. All right, so we have our slope. I'll keep my slope in this way, whatever that is. Um, the y-intercept, I'm going to take a y-intercept. So that's it, right? They just asked for the tangent lines, approximate the tangent lines. Okay, so that would have been the approximation. Uh, but if you want to find the actual slope, okay, so that's kind of what we would do, right? We're trying to approximate it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually graph this line um, on our decimals just to see you know how good our approximation was so I need the y-intercept because I have the slope now the y-intercept um, I guess it's a little tough okay but I mean they said it's you know to use the graphing tool so let's let's take a look here so if I you know we will see okay what point is that it's zero one okay so it looks like it's passing through 0, 1, which means so the y-intercept is 1. So y is equal to 2, so this is 20 over 2.6, right? x plus 1. Well, check that out. So it's pretty good approximation. Now, it was a little bit off because if we look, if we zoom in, it's not exactly a tangent line exactly, right? So it shouldn't be um, crossing our uh, graph, okay? It should only be just at one particular point, but it does say approximate. So, you know, in terms of an approximation, it's not bad. Um, so it looks like if it's kind of went in, okay, so the slope is actually not as steep, okay? So we can kind of fudge this around a bit. You know, if we make this, sorry, it's gonna be, let's say seven, let's say eight, okay maybe nine. All right, so it's not that. So eight, five. Oh, that's pretty close. Okay. So now notice, you know, now it's kind of just touching in that one spot, more or less. Okay. But if you zoom out, it looks like it's a nice, very beautiful tangent line. So you can approximate with your graphing tool the other one as well. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes those graphing calculators and tools actually give you what the instantaneous rate of change is. So it's easier to do, but this actually makes you think. All right. Okay. So that was uh, another example. So here is uh, question number four for us. So let's take a look and see, you know, how we can knock this one off. So a track runner is doing drills. All right, the runner is initially running at four meters per second for 10 seconds. At 10 seconds, the runner starts to speed up. Okay, so they're increasing their speed all the way from four to eight meters per second. So it's at a constant rate. And that takes them 10 seconds. After that, runner continues to maintain the speed for 10 seconds. All right, then the runner slows down at a constant rate. Okay, so now they start to slow down. 
um, and then they come to a stop at the end. Okay, so draw by hand the runner's rate of change. All right. Okay, so this is actually a pretty neat exercise because it forces us to try to understand and see, you know, how well do we understand these rates. Okay, so we need, okay, so here is going to be our graph. All right, so we're going to have something like this. Okay. Um, and so let us start. So first it says initially running at four meters per second. Okay, so let's assume um, so that this is, okay, so let's say one, two, three, four, okay? And so that's gonna be, you know, my meters per second. So this is my speed, okay? So speed, let's say velocity, okay? So we have that. This is gonna be my time in seconds. Um, so let's say, so this is four meters per second, and now initially running it for meters per second for 10 seconds. All right, so let's break these down into intervals. Okay, so this is 10 seconds. This is gonna be the other 10, so which is 20 seconds. Okay, then another 10, which is 30 seconds, and let's say another 10, which is 40 seconds. So first, what do we have? They're constantly running, so this is gonna be basically just a flat line right they're running at a constant rate now they're certainly covering distance they're covering four four meters every second so if you were drawing your distance you know then it would be constantly going up okay so that's what would have been happening in terms of the uh, the increase okay now at 10 seconds okay so at 10 seconds so we're here the runner starts to speed up Okay, now they're gonna go all the way up to eight. So it's five, six, seven, eight. So it's gonna be eight. And that's gonna take them. And that happens at a constant rate. So, you know, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, okay, basically right here. Okay, and it's constant. So it's gonna be a straight line. So that's what happens there. Um, okay, so that's that. Now, after that runner continues to maintain the speed, okay, so they, they maintain the speed for another 10 seconds. So this is gonna be another straight line, All right? So we have that. Uh, then the runner slows down Okay, for another 10 seconds, because okay, so I'm going to be running out of space here, so let me extend this a bit. All right, let's me move this out. Okay, I'll put this right here. Oh boy. Um, okay, so the run, the runner slows down at a constant rate to three meters per second. Ooh. Okay. Well, let me do this. Well, three meters per second is here, right? So they're gonna get to somewhere over there. Okay, so three meters per second. So this is gonna be something like this. And finally, the runner slows down at a constant rate to rest. So basically, they stop. And now this happens in three seconds. So if this was, let's say, 50 seconds, so three seconds, let's say one, two, you know, so three, more or less. Okay, so we're gonna be kind of going like this and then this runner slows down and comes to a stop. And there you have it. All right, so this was three. I mean, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's what we needed. All right, so that's by hand. That's a great exercise for you, know, you as students to try to really understand and map it out. Now, what is the average rate of change in speed over the first 20 seconds? Well, okay, so first 20 seconds, so that's from here to here. Okay, so this is what we're kind of doing. We have that secant line there. Um, all right, well, so for part B, you know, so this is my change in the speed over the change in the time. So we are going from eight minus four, and this took 20 seconds. 
Okay, so it's going to be 4 over 20. So what is the rate of change? Well, 4 over 20 is basically 1 over 5. Okay, if you put that in, which is 0 0.2. So that is the rate of change. Okay, now in this case, uh, careful because you, your units on top, so that's meters per second. Units at the bottom is seconds. So this is going to be meters per second per second. And if you remember your fractions, this is meters per second squared, which is basically acceleration. Okay, so as you're accelerating, kind of speeding up. Um, now we're flat, but then we, you know, we we take off at ten. So the the rate of change is that. Um, what is the instantaneous at twenty five? Well, at twenty five, instantaneous rate is zero because we're that's on we're on we're here we're between twenty and thirty. So this is going to be flat lined. You know somewhere in the middle so 25 so that's a flat line so the sustained rate of change here is zero you know meters per second squared so that's what you have for this uh, example all right okay so last one for us so question five okay so we have a few um, few points here how do the slopes of the tangent lines behave around a maximum point? And how do the slopes of the tangent lines behave around a minimum point? So that's A and B. Well, a maximum is, you know, some, we know that a maximum, so the tangent line here, we know that this is going to be zero, right? So that's definitely something that we know. Okay, so this is flat. So we have a, a zero rate of change there instantaneous on the max. Okay, on a local max, some kind of a max. Um, and I guess that's what they mean, right? So local maximums and local minimums. And now, so how do the tangent lines behave around here? Well, around the max, so we know that, you know, the tangent lines kind of go, so they're positive. So going in this direction, so as you go around in this direction from left to right, you'll know that the slopes to the left of the maximum, so to the left of this, they're going to be positive, okay? Now, to the right of it, we know that they're going to be, have a slope of negative. So, I guess in order to see if it's a maximum, you know, just slightly to the left, okay? And this is, you know, again, this is gonna be in a small little region, but just to the left, you know, we want to be able to see is the slope positive, and just slightly to the right, we want to be able to see if the slope is negative. And if that's the case, we know that that point is a max. Now, on the minimum side, it's going to be the opposite, because if you're going in this direction, and here's your minimum, then here, what you're going to see is that the tangent lines just around, okay, so to the left, now they're negative, but then they're going to change, and they're going to be positive. All right, so the changes here, so here the slope goes from positive, okay, you know, zero to negative, while here the slope, the tangent lines go negative slope to zero at the minimum, okay, at the local minimum, and then they go positive. I mean, it, it could be, a, a you know, it doesn't have to be local necessarily, but as you know, sometimes the functions blow up. So saying a maximum might not like a, a maximum over the entire domain may not exist, but around the local, it can. So that's what happens. Okay, so that's these points. Now, the following function has a tangent of 0, 4. Okay, um, so we have a tangent. So basically, we have a slope of 0 at these two Okay, so at x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. Um, and this is a, a, some kind of a cubic. Uh, identify if the tangents occur at a maximum or a minimum. Do not use a graph. All right, so this is exactly what we have to do. So we have to go, so we're going to take, so I'm going to do one of them for you. So this is how you would approach it. Let me copy this. So that's our function. Now they are telling us, so at x equals to negative 1, and then x equals to 3. Okay. 
So I'll do, we'll do one of them because the process is the same. And then the second one, I know they say don't use a graph, um, but I won't feel like calculating it. So we, we're gonna be able to put it up on decimals and then we'll see, um, you know, around there. But, you know, let's, uh, let's take a look. Okay, so negative one. So it's going to, knowing that this is a quadratic, I'm gonna kind of sketch this. <laughs> All right. So we have at negative one and then at three. So something happens in these two instances. We can certainly find out what the values are, okay? But if we're gonna be using the same uh, information like here, you know, we wanna be able to see. So we wanna find out, okay, so slightly, okay? I'm gonna put, um, so negative, so to the left of it, so that's going to be, you know, let's say negative 1.001. You know, zero, zero, one. Okay, we want to find the slope there. And then we want to find the slope at just slightly to the right of it, which is going to be 0 point, let's say, 999. Nine, nine. All right, so at these two points. So if we find the slope at these two points, then we can see. All right, so what happens here? Okay, now... It technically, I mean, we don't even, since they told us that it's zero, right? So to the left, what are we looking for? Well, to the left, we're looking, if it's positive, right? So we have that, and we have to see this. Now we can confirm if it is a maximum or minimum, because what might happen is, you know, you might have something like this, right? So notice in these situations, they're not a maximum or a minimum in this case because they change. So, you know, here you have a positive slope, but after this, you still have a positive slope, right? Although here your, your slope, instantaneous slope is flat zero, but they are telling us that we know that these tangent, okay, lines have negative one and three. So let's take a look and see. Um, all right, so first this one. So I'll do the calculation um, and then I'll be right back, okay? And then I'll do the calculation for this okay, and be right back. All right, so welcome back. Okay, so what I did was, you know, I took, so first, okay, so kind of going in, in this direction, okay, around negative one, you know, so I, I, I went slightly a little bit further, and then, you know, I took this point and point at negative one, okay, and basically try to find the slope. Now it turns out that the slope is positive, Okay, and then what I did was I went slightly to the right, okay, um, so that was right here, okay, and calculated it out, okay, and then this is, you know, now it's negative. So what this is telling me is that right here, what do we have? It's some kind of a local max, all right? And uh, if you take a look at the other one, so if you would do this one, you actually would get the opposite. So you would get negative one, and then moving into positive. So you would get something like this on the rates of change, which means this would have been a local minimum. All right, local minimum, okay? So that's how we could tell. Now let us graph it as well, um, and then we'll see the confirmation, okay? So let me remove these, and let's plot this out. <clears throat> Um, so this is g of x is equal to 1 over 3, you know, x cubed minus x squared um, minus 3x and plus 2. All right, so there you have it. So let's see, let me just show you. It's not what I wanted. Okay, like that. All right, so you can see. So here is our... So at negative one, indeed, we have a local max. And at three, we have a local min. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching. Um, enjoy your future videos. Okay. Happy studying for your advanced uh, functions. Cheers, everybody. Bye.